and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and this is the second sketchbook tour of my channel so far. The last video I made was my horse mustaches video and that video completed my sketchbook with the sketches I had to do for it. So I decided it would only be relevant to do a sketchbook tour. It took me about 10 months to finish it. There's lots of brainstorming and thumbnail sketches for product I was working on in school, as well as a lot of YouTube video sketches that I used to create the YouTube videos on this channel. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be skipping over those since you can check out my channel to see those. And even after filming all of the walkthrough of this sketchbook, the video was very long, so I will be splitting this into parts, so this is part one. The sketchbook that I adore and that I use all the time is the Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. It's 98 pounds, and there's about 70 pages in here. It's nine by 12 inches. And what I really love about this is you can customize the cover. There is a Strathmore Mixed Media paper on the front which this will be a video after my sketchbook tour where I will be taking some of my favorite drawings from this sketchbook and kind of making a cover page for this sketchbook. How many times can I say sketchbook? Speaking of sketchbooks, I do have an affiliate link for this as well and I really recommend it. It's very sturdy, it really handles water and other mixed medias very well, but enough chit chat, let's get started. So for the first page in this sketchbook, I decided to do a animal study or animal study of my animal hybrid character, a bippo. It is a beaver hippo, as you can tell, they have some beaver tails here, the very hippo-y face and little cute furry bodies here. When I got this sketchbook, I was so excited, I wanted to dive right in and I was doing all kinds of animal hybrids, so I figured why not fill a whole page of my favorite one, bippo. So this is bippo here, I was kind of practicing the different angles of the hippo faces and the beaver bodies, so yeah, that's page one. All right, here's the next page. So again, some more animal hybrids that I've already established in the past. Here I've got some snostriches. You can kind of see it. I'm using colorized pencils for all of these drawings as well, just to add some more color and they don't transfer as much as graphite does. It still does a little bit as you can see from here, but it's not as bad as if it was graphite. And it's a little bit more distinguishable too because instead of it all being gray, you can actually see the different colors to be able to distinguish what you drew from what before. Otherwise it would be all gray and all smudgy if you know what I mean. So here's Sasha the Snostrich. If you've seen my first sketchbook tour, she was designed in that sketchbook, and I'll have that linked in the description below. But she is a cobra ostrich. So here I was kind of playing around with the poses of the ostrich body and the snake cobra head. This is my lemuram character here. He's a lemur and a ram hybrid. So again, I'm just kind of messing around with different posing and angles of the face to kind of get that character down a little bit. Moving on to this page. Oh my gosh, look. This happened my last sketchbook tour too. Hi guys. They are too cute. They always visit me when I'm trying to do a sketchbook tour, honestly. Anyway, moving on from that distraction, here on this page I have my sea geese. So sea goose or sea geese together. And these are just seahorses and geese combined, so those are my sea goose hybrids. And something interesting about seahorses that I didn't know is when I went to the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, I was looking at the seahorses a bunch and they actually use their tails to grab onto different structures in the water, such as seaweed and other plants underwater, so they don't float away. So I kind of tried to draw that a little bit in here while he's kind of hanging around, hanging out with this other sea goose. I really enjoyed the textures that I could get with the feathers and the spininess of the seahorses. So that's something I really enjoy about the design of this character. I decided to add a couple other of my water hybrids here. Here's my hedger fish, which are hedgehog puffer fishes, and my for real character. It's definitely one of my favorites. If you don't know, my Sketching with Sarah logo has a for real in it, or a ferial in it. It's a ferret eel, ferret electric eel, I should say, because these are bioluminescent dots on it. Um, it's really cool when it's colored, and I also have a, actually, let me show you. So these are some 3D printed, let's see if you can see that, some 3D printed for reals that I actually designed and created in ZBrush. So I sculpted this whole thing and just had it 3D printed. And this one's really cool because in the dark, all of these I painted with glow-in-the-dark paint. So it's like darkness, and then you just see like this line 
line. I'll insert a clip here of showing you when I turn on and off the lights of this. So this was one that I actually printed at school because they have 3D printers there, which is really cool. I'm very grateful to be able to have tried that out. Otherwise, this one is from Shapeways. Let's see if I can get you closer here. I don't know how well the camera's gonna show you that, but it's got some, it's a lot more detail as far as you can even see the teeth. And let's see, let's see if it'll show you. You can see some of the claws in there and like the finger pads. I apologize for the focusing here, but yeah, you can see like the teeth and like the little, um, little nails, but it's very much more fragile and it's also like way smaller because it is a little bit pricey if you go bigger than this and it is solid versus this one is hollow. So yeah, I thought I'd just include that to show you that these are one of my um, favorite animal hybrids that I've created and that's why she's part of my, or he I guess, I don't really know part of my logo here. <laughs> Moving on to the next page here. So this one, this abomination here, I honestly think he's kind of cute, but I've got some comments that it's quite creepy <laughs> and weird and gross. But anyway, so this is my pig worm or worm egg. I, I don't know. It's like a worm pig, if you will. And I wanted to start this thing on my Instagram where I would take my Colorize pencils in my pencil case and I would start from like two and then make a drawing inspired by these two colors of an animal hybrid and then move on to the next two and the next two just to see what I can come up with as far as inspiring me to create an animal hybrid which I really enjoy making. So this was the first day. I don't know if I think I did a couple more days and I ended up kind of letting that challenge go just because I had other things and this was during my school semester too so I had other priorities to work on but that was fun to do um, to kind of challenge myself I might pick that up eventually but we'll see and this I love this character here I created a puffer poodle I think I ended up calling this one a puffer poodle and I really was trying to play off of the whole poofiness of poodles and the poofiness of puffer fish so I've got this Siamese twin looking thing hanging out on this poodle here and I've got some of those dots that maybe aren't inflated or the dots that are the, the pattern on the skin of the puffer fish. I thought I'd just add these here to kind of add more texture to it. I really enjoy this character and I might actually revisit this one for another illustration in the future. So be on the lookout for that guy. So this was around the time of the holiday card contest where people can submit their drawings or designs to be featured on the NIU holiday cards that get sent out to everybody. So this is my preliminary sketching for a little bit of uh, layout planning for that drawing that I submitted for that. I'll insert a picture here of what that ended up looking like at the very end. And then here's a, a bit of a sketch for my next drawing that I was kind of trying to plan out for another challenge in a way. It was a draw this in your style challenge of one of my favorite comics so I just couldn't not do it. So that was pre-planning sketch for that. And speaking of that, so I do have it protected here because it is colored pencil and I didn't want to smear onto all this. So this is that. So if you have never heard of pet foolery on Instagram, it's pet underscore underscore, oh my gosh. Pet underscore foolery on Instagram. It's this adorable comic of this little kitten Pixie and her big brother veteran military dog Brutus here. And it was a draw this in your style that I just could not pass up. And I decided to, instead of making it digital like I normally work with, I decided to just go full on traditional and really get into that colored pencil. So I did mostly colored pencil for this whole thing. And then at the very end, just to add some extra clarity and crispness, I used some Micron pens to kind of really distinguish the different shapes from each other. So this is one of my favorite drawings. I did end up getting a shout out from a Pixie and Brutus fan page, which is really cool on my Instagram. So if you wanted to see that, go check that out. My Instagram is Sketching with Sarah. So yeah, I really love this drawing. I love how cute and innocent she looks as always. And the way that Brutus looks up at her, like he would just do anything to protect her. I think I really captured that in his look here. But yeah, so that's my Draw This In Here style from the Pixie and Brutus comic. And here are some of my thumbnails and preliminary sketches for a couple of projects I had going on the same time during my semester. So I had a life drawing class during this time and I had a prompt that I had to do that was before and after was the prompt. So I decided to make a 
diptych showing before and after I got my beautiful dog Kista. So this was the, my idea for the before here where I would be kind of laying in bed, not really having much to do. You know, I was my, my mental state wasn't at its highest or best, I should say. So I was laying in bed a lot kind of during the daytime. So I was thinking of maybe having some sunshine rays coming down through it or something. And then this would be my after photo that I would be drawing for the second part of the diptych. And it would be me and my dog laying in the grass, show that like you know, they're both in the sunshine, but one is obviously me laying in bed napping while the other one is outside with my beautiful dog. So that was kind of my idea for that one so I could show my professor to get going on that. And then here, here are a couple thumbnails and preliminary sketches that I was trying to brainstorm for my bar illustration. In my previous sketchbook tour, I started brainstorming this character here, which is a gorilla lion or gorillion or whatever. <laughs> He was one of the prompts for Inktober actually in my first sketchbook tour. So I was really trying to incorporate him in this bar scene. I had this big beer barrel. Can't really see that, can you? But yeah, this is a Bippo with his hippo mouth really wide open here. You can see this beer barrel like just dramatically going into his mouth there. So I kind of imagined him doing that and then the gorilla just being like chug, chug, chug or something like that. And, you know, I had another sketch here. You could barely see it with a couple you know, beer bottles here and there. So those are just some preliminary sketches for just trying to get an idea for that project and illustration class I was taking. All right, so this is a more fleshed out illustration from the previous page of my little brainstorming session there. And here I decided to add a couple other characters. Maybe there's a bartender up here, which I did end up keeping. My Lee Moran character kind of chilling in the back with some beer and this whole like chug chug situation going on in the front. Now, as much as it pained me, I did end up taking him out for the final illustration and if you've seen my other sketchbook tour I popped an image of what it ended up being and I can do that again right now so I did end up scrapping this guy as much as I love him I might include him in, in another illustration in the future of maybe more of a college party setting because I really enjoyed all this that was going on in the background and I really wanted to zoom in and emphasize what was going on here and he just kind of just wasn't working with it so as much as I loved him I had to kind of lovingly pat him aside so you can't really see the very well but you can kind of see this is my seal lion character which is a seal and a lion and I was kind of redrawing my toy design idea that I had a few semesters ago at this point I believe and I created a toy design for some stuffed animal hybrids and I did end up making a prototype of this guy in a stuffed animal form and I can actually bring him here real quick. so <laughs> He's really derpy looking, but this was just me literally just trying to get the shapes and stuff like that. I, I rented a, actually I bought like a stuffed animal book, I guess, and just to kind of try and get the shapes right. So I kind of just trying to make a fin here and I had limited white fabric too. So I kind of had to use scraps and sew them together to like make bigger scraps so I could make this guy. So he's very prototypey, but I've got that lion mane with some fur fabric that I got, fur faux fabric, I should say. And yeah, there's a couple things I wanted to fix with this design, like his nose just kind of, I don't know, I don't really like it. It's kind of horsey, if you know what I mean. So there's lots I could fix with this guy, but for now I I'm really proud of myself that I actually took it to this level and really tried to make a prototype for this toy design that I started sketching out here. So I just wanted to add another clip in here really quick to show you another, I guess, prototype that I'm making for my Octophant character. So as you can see, it's very in the works. There's a lot of hot glue because I didn't feel like actually sewing some of it. I kind of just made these pieces and then hot glued them together for now until I can figure out a more seamless way to stitch them together. But yeah, <laughs> here's my Octophant um, prototype stuffed animal. I really love him, but another thing is that I actually put a mask over here because I messed up painting on the eyes the first time. So I kind of just cut a new piece of fabric and tried again. But yeah, so maybe he'll be more developed in the future and possibly be sold. I don't really know. But for now, he's just fun to have on my desk and maybe I'll make a more refined version of him in the future. So yeah, you can barely see it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Still can barely see it. But um, so since these are the animal designs animal hybrid designs, I should say, that I made for these toy designs. They were all like surf and turf, so like one animal of the hybrid was um, a land animal and the other one was a sea animal, so I decided to make this like 
surf and turf toy design thing and these would be the tags that would come on all of this stuffed animals and I created a little poem like for Simone the sea lion I had this little drawing of him with a fish here that looks kind of dead this is me just kind of redrawing it in the sketchbook so that I could maybe make one in the future but yeah, I even had like a little poem in here that was like, Simone the Sea Lion. I love to swim and I love to roar, but fish is something I love more. So that was just a cute little, I don't know, something that you could put in a toy tag there. So this was me kind of trying to brainstorm how I would put the turnarounds onto one sheet. So lots of brainstorming and stuff on this page. So I think this is where I picked up on the next two pencils in my colorized pencil set here. So I think I did these two colors next. And what inspired me with those colors was to make a flamingo oxalotl. Oxalingo? Oxalamingo? Here you can actually see me trying to brainstorm a name for it. But I think I ended up going with an oxalingo. Lingo? Oxolingo, that's a really hard word to say. But um, yeah, so this is my cute character here. I really enjoyed sketching out the flamingos and the oxalotls just to get my brain going with these before I started to combine them. I really enjoy this design here and I might end up using her in the future because I really, I just think they're so silly and I really like them, so. Stay tuned for that. On this page, I have my Giralligator, which is a giraffe alligator hybrid that I made for my toy design. So this is me kind of just doing another turnaround type situation, seeing front and the back and the side here. So I really apologize, you guys can't see super well, but I think I got 400 followers on Instagram or something like that. So I decided to do something a little bit more interactive with my followers and I requested people to give me their two favorite animals. So one of the ones that I got uh, was someone's two favorite animals was a red-eyed tree frog and a largemouth bass. So I started to draw some tree frogs and largemouth bass here and kind of combine them to make this really alien, <laughs> alien looking guy here. Um, not gonna lie, really creepy, but I kind of like it. I don't know, very, very strange. I feel like the fingers just creep me out more than they should. Anyway, <laughs> someone also submitted a platypus and penguin. Those were their two favorite animals. So I drew some platypi, some penguins, and made this Naruto running platypenguin guy here. <laughs> There's that. And for these, these are some other people that submitted what their two favorite animals are. And one of my friends actually submitted her two favorite, which are thresher sharks and sea otters. So I love the otters, so I definitely took advantage and drew a bunch of those. And some thresher sharks here. And I really enjoy how their faces just look so, I don't know, scared? Like just surprised all the time in a way? I don't know. They're very expressive, if that makes sense. But yeah, so then I decided to combine them and made this like derpy thresher fish sea otter here. I guess it could be like a thresher otter. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I usually don't think of the names before I draw them. I kind of just make the hybrids based on their characteristics and the traits and the physical features that they have. And then I usually struggle with the name afterwards, but sometimes they come easier than others. So here's another one. Someone said that their favorite animals was a sloth and a bear. So here's some sloth drawings here. Uh, here's a bear. There's some bear claws and here's what I made for the sloth bear. Um, so there's another sloth and then kind of chilling here with a little baby sloth bear in him. So cute. I don't know how I feel about this face but um, I feel like I merged them pretty well. Around this time I started to actually read or listen to the audiobook of Harry Potter for the first time and I was watching the movies and things like that so of course I wanted to know what my Patronus was so I wanted to take that quiz first of all to figure out what house I'm in and I'm definitely a Hufflepuff and when I took the Patronus quiz I got a mink and a bat so I took it twice so specifically so I could make a hybrid out of them so this is my mink bat hybrid here uh, and here I feel like I'd be all right if I had a Patronus as a mink bat but that's just me comment below and let me know what house you're in and also what your Patronus would be because I'm actually really interested so let me know and then here's some other hybrids I tried to make continuing on with that Polaroid's pencil challenge I made for myself. So I believe this was for these next two colors and these were these next two colors. And yeah, so <laughs> I guess when I thought of 
those purpley pink colors. I was thinking of starfish and this butterfly that had those kind of colors to it. And I tried to combine them and it's just like, it's an abomination. It looks like an alien or something. Just not a fan. And for this one here, I have a, oh, I believe they're called Oh gosh. Oh no. I, I'm trying to remember what the name of this guy is. I feel like it's a Dumbo squid. No, I don't remember, but they were really cute. And I'll pop an image or put what the actual name is when I'm editing to let you guys know. But yeah, this guy is really cute and he was almost the same color as the colorized pencil I was using. And then the only other thing I could think of was to combine him with some lilac flowers. I don't really know. So he made this like psychedelic looking weird squid thing. <laughs> Not, not a huge fan, but um, I feel like if I were to try to flesh it out more, I would either get discouraged or I don't know. Maybe I'll have to revisit it someday, but for now, it's just a, a weird doodle in my sketchbook. Thank you guys so much for watching this first part of my sketchbook tour. If you enjoyed it so far, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more art related content. I always upload a new video every single Friday and it would mean a lot for you to join my little art family here. If you made it this far, I would like you to comment what is your Hogwarts house? What do you want your Patronus to be? And maybe one of your favorite sketches that I shared in this video. I will have some affiliate links of this sketchbook and some of the supplies I used in the drawings in this part of my sketchbook tour, as well as links to my social media and some other videos you might like to watch after this one. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.